equal in purity to wisdom. He who becomes perfected by yoga finds this of himself in his self in the course of time. Shri Krishna has completely changed the way in which people look at sin. There's any different, big differences in thinking between the East and the West, and this is an area in which there is a big difference. In the West, sins are looked at as a reality. They say that a sin was committed in the Garden of Eden, and from that all that happened was sin, sin and sin. They say that it's not, be pos it's not possible to be released from sins because sin is a reality. Indian spiritualists say that sin is not reality. In fact, sin is a dream. The material world is not a reality. In fact, it is a dream. Everything that one does on coming to the material world is a dream. There is no bondage to dreams, but while the dreams are ongoing, then bondages arise, and when the dreams finish, then the bondages go away. You become awake in the dream of the material world through wisdom. When a sun of wisdom rises, then your sleep will stop and all your dreams will fall to one side. Such thoughts are very revolutionary. We are not concerned with the fact that uh, we just have to look at uh, the curing and uh, because we just have to look at the curing and the treatment. It is another subject altogether to discuss whether sins are reality, but what view do you look at sins from? What is your attitude? Are you taking sin as a fact or a dream? Because of this, there will be a change to your development. If you see sins as a reality, then you will become bound and you'll get stuck. But if you see sins as a dream, then there will always be a flame or a wish inside you that this is a dream and you can let it go. Our scriptures have such concepts, such as uh, have many such concepts, such as a beautiful concept of having your sins erased by bathing in the river Ganga. Who knows why? the reason why we bathe in river Ganga. It's to wash our sins away. An intellectual asked Guruji a question of whether this is a fact. Guruji told him he's not concerned about whether it's a fact or not, he's just concerned about the result. Guruji does not know whether there's such chemicals in the Ganga or a detergent whereby all your sins get erased by bathing in it, Scientists have indeed shown that the water in the Ganga is different from the water in other rivers. There's no debate about this. If you put water from another river inside the bottle, then after a week or so, the bacteria will come inside that water and the water will go off, whereas the water from the Ganga lasts years and years and years without anything happening to it. There is no debate about whether the water is Ganga and is divine, and this has been proved in scientific laboratories. But much more than that, the Ganga has a psychological effect where bathing in the Ganga releases, erases all sins. There must be a very fortunate person who has never committed any sins in this world. Everyone makes a mistake at some time or the other and people create these guilt complexes. People will turn 50 or 60 years of age and think about how much longer they're going to live after committing these sins. Other than that, they have to provide answers uh, and therefore they decide to go and bathe in the river Ganga. After they bathe in the Ganga, then all their sins get washed away. In ancient times it was so difficult and it's still the case today. It may be easy to get there, but it is difficult to get out. There's a big difference between getting there and getting out. There have always been difficulties in doing pilgrimages in both in ancient times and today and a person has to do a lot of planning for this trip. After two months, the person reaches the Ganga at Haridwar and worships the mother Ganga from Harkipuri on the banks. The Ganga jeep flows and he says, Jai Ganga Maya, from just experiencing the atmosphere, he transforms from inside and the experience, he experiences this change in his heart. Then he takes a dip in the Ganga saying Jai Ganga Maya, and as soon as he comes out from taking this dip, the first thing that comes into his mind is that today all his sins have been erased. Can this same thing say it's said by millions of people over thousands of years be untrue? They say that it right that all their sins get washed away. This mass psychology works here on these people. They find out about the greatness of the Ganga 
as so many rishis have meditated on its banks. A whole Indian culture was created by the Ganga, and so many saints had the ashrams near the Ganga. So many people have found a new start in their lives by the Ganga. These people take a dip in such a Ganga, and all their sins get washed away. Then when the person comes back to his worldly life, and an occasion arises where he has to do something wrong, then the question arises in his mind that he has washed away all his sins up until now, so how will he be able to go back to the Ganga? Why should he gather sins again? Therefore, he does not perform the wrong deed. He decides that he has washed away all his sins up until now, and therefore he doesn't want to gather more sins. He has his life therefore purified by bathing in the Ganga. He decides that he does not want to commit any further sins. There have never been psychologists, any psychologists as great as the Rishis of India. They have made the point that the person is greater than the sin. Sins are like the rubbish that has fallen on the human being because it is rubbish. It sh and because it is rubbish, it should be cleaned. It is not a characteristic of the soul or the individual soul. In fact, it is rubbish. Even here, Shri Krishna says again and again that one should know his self through wisdom and the moment one recognizes his self, then he realizes that all of this was rubbish. Just like a bird comes out of the water by flapping his wings to make the water go away, in the same way, a person clears all the rubbish of sins by attaining wisdom. Therefore, Shri Krishna says in this verse that there is nothing on earth that is purifying as wisdom. Nothing can purify a person as much as wisdom does. He who becomes perfected by yoga finds this of himself in his soul in the course of time. When a lamp is far away and comes closer and closer and you're in the jungle at night, all you can see is that a lamp is coming towards you. As a lamp comes closer to you, then you, you realize that a person is coming closer holding the lamp. As the person comes even closer, then you realize it's a woman. Then you wonder who it is, and as she nears, you realize that it's your mother. She's your mother. You ask whether, why your mom has come to search for you holding the lamp. The mother says that she's come to search for you because you are her own. In the same way, when you go on a path of wisdom, and you see something faint in the distance. If you see something faint while uh, listening to this discourse, on the third or the fourth chapter of the Gita, then it's not, not, it is enough. You know that there is something, and slowly and slowly, you become closer to that thing, and that distance keeps reducing until you realize that it's your mother, Shri Krishna, who has come holding a lamp in his hand to come and get you saying, come my son or come my daughter. There is nothing in this world that is as pure as wisdom. Once you have seen Shri Krishna, then there is, is there any need for anything else? then all a person's sins get washed away because you think that if you were a sinner, then why would Shri Krishna come and give you his vision? The very fact that Shri Krishna has come means that you have become important. The very reason he has came means that all your sins have been washed away. Otherwise, why would you be able to see him? The reason why Shri Krishna has his compassion for you is because he saw something in you. You forget everything else in this world, there is nothing as great as wisdom. Verse 39.